Welcome back to Caleb Chicken Pastures. If you follow the channel for a while, you've probably known that we usually do mostly short videos, unscripted. This is just what's going on uh, around our farm on a daily basis. Well, today I'm excited to do a full unboxing and setup of the new Brisney uh, 56 Full Connect uh, Incubator. Uh, if you followed us for a while, you've probably seen our other Brisney incubator. Uh, it's actually still running over here in the corner, uh, and you can hear it turning right now. Uh, I love the Brisney incubators. Uh, they maintain really great temperature control, uh, really good humidity settings. Uh, and so I was really excited for when the Ovation 56 has come out. This is a full app-connected incubator where you can adjust all of your settings through the app. So I haven't uh, done anything with it yet. I've just simply taken it out of the box. Uh, so we're gonna go through a setup today. So uh, in the box comes with your standard uh, manual and some paperwork and some instructions on uh, not only hatching, but the setup and taking care of baby chicks. Uh, I have the connection cord, the electrical cord. Here is the top. Uh, the double insulated top here uh, and you can see on this one it's got the same Brisney kind of panel as the old 56 Ovation incubator but it's also got the connect button up here um, so you can tell this is a full Wi-Fi version of this incubator. Set this off to the side. Also in the box is your silicone pump hose I'll show you how to install that in just a second. You've got your evaporation pad uh, as well. And I will once again show you how to set that up in a second. Then we've got in here two covers for the two ports uh, in the incubator. And then these are your hatching trays. Uh, these are rocking trays. I'll show you how they work in just a second. They generally fit uh, seven uh, standard size chicken eggs inside of them. So seven times eight is 56, if I'm doing my math correctly. So I'm going to take out all of these and I'll show you the rest of the base. So in here, here is, uh, if you're doing automatic turning, this is your automatic turning uh, piece here. Uh, kind of rocks back and forth. We'll show you that setup in a second. And then here is a hatching pad. Uh, these are really important to use something or something like this in the bottom of the incubator. When you are hatching, I typically put it in uh, when it comes time for lockdown. Uh, the reason is, if you look at the base here, uh, it is pretty slippery uh, in whether it's baby chickens or baby quails or whatever you're hatching, uh, their feet and their legs are very, very fragile. So they can very easily slip on this and cause splayed legs or other uh, problems. So uh, I make sure to put that and hatching pad in uh, at lockdown. So to set this up, uh, we'll do the pump, which is the most difficult piece in just a second here. Uh, the easiest part is this. So we're going to take first, this is the evaporation pad, and there's two different ports down inside. And you can see there's one over here and one over here. Uh, only one of these gets filled with one of these evaporation pads, and it's the one that is actually going to take the water. And so if you are looking at this with the turner towards the back, it'll be the one on the right. Uh, and when you put your top on, you'll see that where the water drops out of is where this evaporation pad is gonna go. You take one of your connectors, put it down over the top. I find it particularly difficult to get it to lay down perfectly flat and stay there. That's okay, as long as it sits on top, that's all right. And this other one just sits on the opposite side. You take your hatching trays, make sure that if you're using automatic turning, 
that they are set in place on this rocker specifically and on the other side. So you can see when I turn it, that black tray is rocking. And I'll make sure to set the rest of these up as well, just so you can see what it's like when it's fully set. Now, most of my hatching is done for the year, but I was so excited to try this that I think I'm gonna do uh, one more hatch. And at this time, we no longer, I've got actually this last hatch going for a customer inside of my old 50 cents right now. And I say old, it's not that old, it's great. Uh, but I've got that in there now. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is uh, my gold death layer flock I've got a new rooster, uh, so I'm going to add some genetic diversity to that block by using him this year. Um, toward, and I've had him in there about three weeks now, so I know the eggs are his, or the babies would be his, so I'm probably going to do a hatch there so we can add some diversity to our flock. Okay, so those are set down correctly. And so you can see that when we turn this and we rock this, and the machine will do it automatically for you. These rock as well. Let's set up the top. So if we're looking at the top here, we've got this right here, this single screw, and inside of that is just a little manipulation you need to do uh, to the pump, the water pump. It's actually not the water pump we're doing any manipulation to, it's simply the uh, hose. So I'm going to take just a, a standard screwdriver, take that screw off the top, and I hope that you can see this all right, but you can see this silicone tube right here and this little mechanism right here. That's the pump, uh, and all you need to do here is first just wrap it around that mechanism and bring it to the other side and latch it down in place. That way when the uh, pump turns, it's gonna draw water from whatever vessel you have, uh, the remainder of the hose connected to it. So now we're gonna take our silicone hose. You can cut this to length if you'd like. Uh, I'm not gonna cut it to length just now, I'm just gonna connect it first and cut it to length later. So I'm gonna turn this, and hopefully you see this connection here, right here, and you simply, it's a friction fit. Okay, so you can see, got the tube connected there, it's just a friction fit. One thing you wanna check, and that's what I just did now, was check these two connections as well, that they're nice and tight. Sometimes, uh, so this comes pre-connected, but sometimes that hose loosens over time. Uh, so you might need to cut a little piece of this silicone tubing just to make sure it's on there nice and tight. So I'm gonna get that hose out of the way. And this is how your top sits on the incubator. One thing you want to make sure of is out back is where the motor is to the incubator. And the motor needs to sit on. I'll turn this around and show you. So down here, you can see back here, here's where the motor is. You can see those little gears back there through the plastic. And that needs to sit on that yellow piece there. So when it turns, the motor works. All right, so that setup took me, I don't know, not even five minutes to unbox and set up. We've got the incubation, uh, well, we just got the cord here. And the cord goes in the back of the incubator. 
and there are going to be a two ways to adjust the settings on this one. And this is what I think is going to be really interesting about it. So if this one works nearly as well as the other Brisney incubators, uh, I'm going to be, the humidity is going to maintain great temperature, uh, humidity, excuse me, the temperature is going to remain consistent, which will be great. Uh, the thing that I'm excited to add, is the ability to adjust the settings, whether it be the turning intervals, whether it be the humidity, uh, whether it be the temperature, uh, while on the go. Uh, the reason I like that so much is, well, the Brisney incubators, first of all, are really consistent as far as temperature, but I always have an extra external thermometer and hum, hum, uh, hydrometer, excuse me, that I keep inside of the incubators just to make sure the temperature and humidity is what the machine says it is. So if there's ever an adjustment that needs to be made and you're not at home, you can do that on the go. Okay, so here's the app uh, and you can see no devices are connected. This is the first time I'm using it. So I'm gonna hit the plus and I'm going to configure Wi-Fi. So it tells you all about the permissions that need the location services to find networks on your Wi-Fi. Uh, they need to, permission to connect to your local Wi-Fi and they need camera permission because they're gonna scan a QR code. So we're gonna continue there. We're only gonna allow use the location uh, while using the app and where we're gonna continue. Okay, so I had to scan the QR code. I had to put the incubator into setup mode, which it gave you very easy instructions on the screen how to do that. And now we have successfully connected the incubator. So let's go in and look at the app. So you can see dashboard right on front, 21 days remaining. Now we obviously haven't started anything yet, uh, so we can reset that if we want to. And we can also adjust the number of days remaining. For instance, I may take some eggs from my other incubator uh, that have started just a few days ago, and I could change that down to 18 days remaining and set that if you're going to use this as a hatcher. We got the temperature at 99.3 degrees, so this has been running for maybe five minutes, so it's already almost up to temperature. Humidity is at 39 degrees. I had set it at 45. Now I don't have any water connected to it yet, so uh, that's the reason why the humidity isn't quite there. So let's take a look at the humidity setting. So we can change the humidity if we wanted to. So depending on what type of breed I'm hatching during lockdown, I might change the humidity from 45 up a little bit, uh, or depending on the breed, I might keep it right where it is. So I'm gonna leave it right where it is for now. It also has a low humidity alarm. At what humidity do you want to be notified if you run out of water, for example, uh, or if the humidity drops too low? I'd like to keep it around 10%. It allows a little bit of variation. Now this machine, unless there's a blockage or the pump stops working or something, it will never get down to 10%. Uh, so normally that's an indicator that maybe you ran out of water. We'll go back. Obviously you can adjust the temperature if you wanted to. Uh, I have it in Fahrenheit. I did that on the machine. Got 99.5 and then you get a high and a low temperature alarm. So I like to be notified if it gets above maybe 102. Uh, this is set at basically around 103. That's perfectly fine. The low temperature, I like to be notified if it gets down below 95. This is around 94. That's fine as well. Periodic cooling. So I have this disabled uh, right now, but you can enable that. If you think about in nature, how your broody hens will get up once, maybe even twice a day, go out, 
they'll get a drink of water, they'll pee, they'll poop, uh, all of that. Uh, maybe get something to eat, and maybe for around 30 minutes. So some people think that this is going to better mimic uh, what it would be like in nature. Now, I will also tell you that these, because these incubators are so well insulated, it takes a long time for them to really, really go come down. So this is going to temporarily stop the heat, um, but it's not going to cool all that much. Turning, automatic turning. So we have this on automatic mode. Now here is where you can turn it to off if you wanted to. Um, right now we're on. And the interval. So every 45 minutes, but you can change that to every, for instance, 60 minutes. Do you want it to beep? I do not want it to beep. This is one thing, these incubators in it, you can hear slightly in the background. It's very quiet. The only thing that tends to make noise is when it turns. So what I like to do, if we're gonna keep this in a room where we might be at night, uh, is to go ahead and turn that off. Now, the last thing I'm gonna do here is do a test turn. Go over here, and you can see they are rocking. Perfect. So you can see that that turned, uh, which is great. So I'm going to do one more test turn here just so you can see it a little bit better. Perfect. So you see how those rocked back and forth. So we'll go ahead and save those settings. And go back out, back to the dashboard now. You can see in here, incubator settings. Uh, we have all sorts of things in there uh, that you can obviously we've gone through, the changing of the humidity or the temperature, the periodic cooling, the turning incubation days, and the Wi-Fi device name. So if you had multiple uh, of the connect devices out there, you could change the name so you could set it so you knew which one you were looking at. I've only got one at the time, so I'm not going to need to change that name. Okay, so we've got both going side by side. I usually use a gallon jug of distilled water next to the incubator to go ahead and put it in. Now, no free advertising, but you can see the, the type of bourbon I prefer. And this bottle happens to fit just perfectly between the two. So what I'm going to take is the old incubator's tube and go ahead and put that right down if I can get a standy hand. There we go, right down in there. Beautiful. I like to make sure it goes all the way to the bottom and I'll do that in just a second. Now, you can see they give you lots of extra tubing here. I don't need nearly this much, so I'm going to cut that tubing and put that down in as well. All right, I'll finish the setup. Got uh, a few eggs over here in the old Brinzi. We've got 21 eggs over here. I usually am a fan of filling these things up, but uh, it's the last one or two hatches of the year. So this is it. And I will see you in a few weeks, hopefully with a great hatch result.